A lot of home users like to run Pi-hole in their network to block ads, ad tracking, telemetry data, or malicious domain names. Pi-hole works great for that and has a nice web interface that has some graphs and charts and even has uh, a log of all of the DNS queries that happen on your network. So you can take a look at what's going on and see what's being allowed and blocked on your network. And you can add exceptions to that list or add more additional blocks to that list as well and add other lists that you can find on the internet that has uh, some domain names that you might want to block in addition to the ones that come with Pi-hole. So there's some customization you can do there to fine tune it for your network for your needs to block as many ads or other malicious domains that you do not want on your network. I want to show you how to set up Pi-hole in Proxmox and configure it to work with OpenSense. So what I'm going to do at a high level is have OpenSense configured to hand out the Pi-hole DNS server to all the network clients. And then Pi-hole will be configured to use unbound DNS in OpenSense as its upstream server, and then OpenSense will use whatever upstream server you have configured. So I want to cut over to my system and show how to set up Pi-hole and Proxmox first in a container, and then we'll move on to configuring OpenSense and do some more configuration of Pi-hole as well. I'll show how to set it up on a single network first, and then I'll show some additional configuration you'll need to do if you want to set this up for multiple networks, if you have VLANs or other networks set up in OpenSense. So now I'm logged into the Proxmox web interface and if you go up to the top, you can click create container. And then I'm going to enter a CTID of 312 and a host name of Pi-hole. And then you just enter a password for the root user. Click next. For this step, you just need to pick your template you're going to use for your container. And mine is actually stored on the uh, network share, so I'm going to be picking a different storage, but you might just pick local for yours if you're, it's on the same server. I'm going to pick Ubuntu 22.04. You can use a different operating system, but the instructions will vary a little bit if you're not using a you know, Debian-based operating system because the commands might be a little bit different. I'm going to click Next. So for the storage, you can use local ZFS. Otherwise, it might be like LVM or some other um, storage naming up here at the top. By default, it's eight gigabytes. You can up this to 10 if you want to just make it nice and even. You can always change this value later. It's easy to do and the container will recognize it immediately. So it's not, not that big a deal. Click next. Hey, for cores, you might want to select two here because I noticed if I selected one, I got a warning message about exceeding 100% CPU when it's first loading like the block list. It depends on how fast your single core performance is on your system. But if you use two cores, you should be good to go. So I'll click next. By default, it's set to 512 megabytes. You can lower this to 256 if you want to minimize the amount of resources available. You could probably almost get away with 128 megabytes. The Pi-hole doesn't use that much resources at all. For the network, you need to pick the bridge of the network where you want Pi-hole to uh, live on. And I'm going to pick my virtual LAN network because I have some virtual bridges here for in Proxmux that will represent the LAN network that I have here. For IPv4, I, I like to pick DHCP and then assign a, a static IP in OpenSense so that I can control all my static IPs in one place in OpenSense. Uh, for the same for IPv6, I usually use Slack. Even though I had DHCP running on my network, I noticed Slack seems to work a lot better at Proxmox from, from my experience. So those are two options there you want to set and click next. For the domain name, uh, if your Proxmox host is on a different network than your container, you'll want to set this uh, DNS server to be the DNS server of your LAN network. Um, mine's going to be in the same network, so it'd probably be okay if I just left it blank. But I always like to specify the DNS server for each of my containers because if you're on a different network, it's going to try to use the host um, DNS server of the Proxmox host. And if you don't have the firewall rules in place in OpenSense, you, you won't have access to the servers. Finally, we're going to click start after created and click finish. You'll see that it's starting to create the container here. And once it, once it says uh, task OK, we can hit close on this. And we still need to wait a few seconds here. And you notice it's loaded up. And we'll click on pie hole over here. And now we have the login prompt. We're just going to use the root user and log in using the password we used when we first created the container. So first thing you want to do is update your software because it's going to be out of date a little bit when you're using a container because it's it doesn't have all the latest updates. It's just going to be whatever it was when you first got that container, which is like the base um, Ubuntu installation. So let's do um, apt dist update upgrade. Okay, and then say yes. Okay, now that that's done, we need to install curl using apt install curl 
This is something that's gonna be necessary to, to run the PyHole installation script. So let's install this. Before installing PyHole in the container, let's set up a static IP address for the PyHole DNS container. So let's go to network and let's double click on here and we'll see there's a MAC address here. We'll copy and paste this and we'll save this for later after we're logged into OpenSense. Now that we're in the OpenSense dashboard, let's go to services, DHCP v4, click on the LAN network and scroll to the bottom and we'll We'll uh, go down here and click on this plus button to add a new static DHCP reservation. Let's paste that MAC address in. Let's use the IP address of 192.168.1.10. And the host name will just be PyHole. Okay. The description is, you can just put whatever you want here, PyHole DNS server. Let's scroll to the bottom, click save and then click apply changes. Now let's jump back over to Proxmox. Now that we set a static IP address in OpenSense for this container, we can either reboot by typing the reboot command or you can go over to this menu and click reboot. Um, if, since we're already in the console, we can just type reboot and then we'll just wait for it to restart, which doesn't take very long at all. So let's go to the root user here, go back, log back in. Let's do IPA to see if the IP address has changed. And as you can see, we now have 192.168.1.10. So now we have a static IP. So now let's go ahead and install PyHole. So here's the command to run PyHole. So let's get started. All right, it says this will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker. That's our goal, right? Hit enter. And it's free, but powered by donations. So hit enter. And it says it needs a static IP address, which we just configured. So we can say continue. Uh, this is important because it is a server and it, the IP address you know, can't change because everything on the network is going to be using that IP address for your DNS. Continue. And since we're going to use um, OpenSense, the unbound DNS, as the upstream DNS server, just go to custom and we'll type in 192.168.1.1. Since that's going to be our OpenSense DNS server for the LAN network, so we'll hit OK. And yes, and this is going to be the block list that's going to be used. This is the default block list for PyHole. We might as well hit yes. So you at least have some uh, domains to be blocked in there. And it says, do you want to install the admin web interface? Most users are going to say yes to this because most people like that web interface to have the, the graphs and charts and be able to manage uh, PyHole. But uh, some people might want to do command line for everything, and that's a possibility. Um, but let's just hit yes. It says you're going to need a web server for that, so hit yes to install a web server. Now it's going to ask if you want to log your queries, which most likely you want to do so you can have the detailed information about your logs. But I can see where if you have a, a micro SD card or something like that you're using, you might not want a lot of wear and tear on the device. You might want to disable that, but I feel like that kind of reduces the usefulness of PyHole because you need to look at those detailed logs sometimes to see what's actually being blocked in detail. So let's hit yes on this. For the privacy mode, we're just going to show everything. Because I can see if you're doing maybe like a public Wi-Fi network that maybe you want to make some of these requests anonymous to protect some, maybe some privacy of your users. But for home network, we're just going to default to show everything so we can look at everything. All right, now it's installing some things here and doing some checks. Now you have arrived at the final screen and it tells you the IP address of your PyHole server as well as the default login password that's auto generated so it's not admin admin you actually have a default password that's randomly generated which is a little bit more secure so make note of this password so you will be able to log into your web interface okay now let's log into the PyHole web interface and make sure everything's loaded properly so in your web browser let's go to 192.168.1.10 slash admin as you can see here's the PyHole interface now what we need to do is type in the password that was auto generated as you can see here, it shows that there's total queries is zero and zero queries blocked, uh, zero percentage blocked, but you'll see that the domains are 193,000 domains are on the ad list. This is what we would expect since we're not fully set up with PyHole on OpenSense yet, but uh, we can at least get into the web interface, which is a good sign that everything's set up properly. Now we're at the dashboard of OpenSense, so let's go to services, DHCP v4, and go to the LAN network. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here to the DNS server section and we're going to type in our PyHole address, which you should know it by now. Okay, and we'll scroll to the bottom and we'll click save. Now that we've done this, we need to release and renew our DHCP addresses of our client machines 
so that it would actually take effect because this DHCP server is actually going to provide this IP address for the DNS server for all the clients that are using DHCP. So let's do that next. Okay, now we're in our Linux machine and if we type resolve CTL, you'll actually see that our current DNS server is 192.168.1.1 and that is our LAN network DNS server, and it should be 1.10. So one thing we can do is just simply disconnect and reconnect, which is one easy way to do it. Um, you can also run a command to re release and renew DHCP addresses. So you can say sudo dhclient-r, and it kills the old uh, DHCP client, and they can say sudo client, or sudo, however you want to say it. Uh, without the dash r and it'll actually um, refresh and renew the ip address so if we do resolve ctl again you'll see that it now says 192.168.1.10 so if we go back to our web browser and um, go to google for example uh, if we go to pihole and we refresh this page now you'll see there's actually uh, DNS lookups going through Pi-hole now uh, from my device on my LAN network that I just refreshed. And you'll see the name of it down here as the total uh, top clients. And you'll see the total requests and some of the, and the block counts down here. So that that's uh, all you need to do to get it working for the LAN network. So now what I'm going to show you is um, what you need to do if you have multiple local networks that you have uh, separated, you know, uh, with VLANs or just other interfaces on the firewall. Um, there's a couple extra steps that you need to do to actually make this work. So let's go to settings on here. We'll go ahead and change the settings on Pi-hole first, and then we'll we'll go ahead and change uh, OpenSense to account for these changes, okay? So once we get to the settings page, let's go to uh, DNS. And you'll notice here it's set to allow only local networks. And this means it only accepts queries from devices that are at least one hop away. So it means uh, any devices that are on the same subnet, local network. Um, so only clients on the LAN network will be allowed with this setting. And uh, this is set by default for security in case you just set this up and you don't really you know, configure anything away from the defaults. Uh, it's just kind of a safer um, setting because if you allow everything like down here, then that means, and you have it open to the internet, it means people can use DNS amplification attacks, which is not a good thing for the security of your network. You could, could uh, DDoS your network essentially. But so these say potential dangerous uh, options, but since we're not opening up the DNS server to the internet, it's okay to, to select these options down here. Cause it'll even say, if you have not forwarded your port 53 on your router, these options are actually safe to use in a typical home network setup down here. So what we'll do down here is we'll just click this first option that says respond only on the interface ETH0. It's a little bit less open than the prevent all origins, I believe. I was trying to determine what the difference is you know, from the documentation. And then let's go down to the advanced DNS settings section because these two, these two options here, you can actually, um, you probably want to uncheck them because we're going to be forwarding all of our requests to our unbound DNS on OpenSense, which is going to be able to handle all of these private uh, IP addresses and then private host names that we're using. And we don't want uh, Pi-hole to interfere with uh, local host name resolutions or anything like that, or reverse IP lookups within our network, because these would actually potentially block some of that when going upstream. And since you know we're using OpenSense as our upstream provider, we can uncheck these boxes and we'll scroll down and hit save. All right, so now that we have this, we're gonna go back to OpenSense and we're going to the IoT network. Yeah, so we're gonna go down to the DNS servers in on the IoT network, just like we did at the LAN network. So this is gonna look the same, right? We're gonna put the IP address for the Pi-hole server Let's click save. So what we're going to do now is switch over to my device that's on the IoT network and uh, refresh that DHCP lease so that it'll get this DNS server. And so we'll do that same exact process we did for this machine. As you can see, we're back on our other machine. We got the different host name here and we're going to do the resolve CTL command again. And you can see that our DNS server is our interface IP address of uh, .20.1. So we are going to release and renew the DHCP lease so that we can get the Pi-hole server IP address. 
So let's do sudo dh client dash r. Okay. And we'll just do the same thing without the dash r. And we'll check resolve. And then we'll check resolve ctl. And you'll see now we have the pihole uh, DNS address. So if we go up here, let's see if we can access a domain name. And notice we can't access anything just yet because now we're on a different network and the Pi-hole DNS server is now in another network. So we actually need to go back and change our firewall rules. Let's go back to OpenSense and um, make those changes. So we're back in our OpenSense web interface and let's go up to firewall and go to rules and IoT network. As you can see, I have the default rules here that I use, uh, like to use to separate my networks from each other. And I have a rule to allow DNS, and then I have a rule that blocks all private networks, but allows access to all other networks, which would be the internet. So this first rule here, we need to go and edit it, because now we want to use the Pi-hole DNS server and not unbound DNS. Because remember, the Pi-hole DNS server is going to be using unbound DNS as the upstream server. So it's still going to use unbound DNS eventually, but we're not going to use it directly by our clients on our network. So now we need to go to this rule and we're going to scroll down to the destination. We have it set to IoT address. We need to go up to scroll up to where you see, see single host or network. And we're going to type in the pi hole um, DNS address, server address, right? Okay, and we'll set this to 32 since it's a single host. Okay, and we'll scroll down and we'll click save and we'll click apply changes. So now let's go back to the other system, see if we can access the Microsoft.com again. Okay, now we're back on our other system and we're going to try Microsoft.com again and hit enter. As you can see, we can now access Microsoft.com and let's go back to the Pi-hole dashboard and see if we can see this new client that's on our network on the IoT network and see if it shows up in the Pi-hole web interface. Okay, so now we're back on the Pi-hole web interface and let's scroll down and see if we see our new client down here at the bottom. As you can see, we have the Vert1 and the Vert2 virtual machine clients that I have set up. And so both of these machines are now showing up under Pi-hole. So I hope you found this information helpful in setting up Pi-hole in your network, whether you're using a single network or you're using multiple networks, you can actually uh, set Pi-hole in any number of networks that you want on your home network. And you, you can take advantage of all the features that Pi-hole has, which is pretty cool. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.